Hello X-Traders and we're going to quickly cover diagonals today but not so much the how-to's and the theory behind diagonals we're actually just going to jump in to an example trade and I'll see how much that makes sense to you guys before the actual time spread uh, video that I'm going to be posting next month. Okay, so here it is. Basically, a diagonal profit chart looks somewhat like this chart here on the right, and we're always going to be comparing those when we talk about time spreads to the calendars. The only difference is, as you can clearly see, that uh, diagonals are skewed, uh, are skewed in one or the other direction just a little bit. So, Basically what that does is, in this case, as you can clearly see, the left leg of this diagonal is uh, lifted up a little bit above the uh, break-even line, or the zero line, whereas here you would actually get a loss on the stock price downside. So um, in this case, you can uh, basically skew the diagonal you know, to the left or to the right, you know, bearish or bullish. That is going to be the main difference uh, between uh, calendars and diagonals. So let's go ahead and look at an example and it'll, I hope this will make a lot more sense than if I were to just jump into the theory. Okay, so uh, Caterpillar is a stock that I had been looking at for a while. Of course it's expensive, so the minute you think expensive, you think of spreads. If you are a trader who is not willing to spend, you know, 400, 500, 600 dollars on one options contract, then you can go ahead <coughs> and basically use a spread to reduce the cost. And the way that works, we saw it on this video here on verticals, is that you still buy the expensive long call in this case that you want, but you go ahead and you offset it by selling uh, a similar call. Uh, and in the case of the vertical, those have the same strike, sorry, the same uh, expiration date. In the case of uh, time spreads, they have different expiration dates and possibly different strikes. Uh, in the case that we're going to look at today, which is a diagonal, it's going to have a different strike and a different expiration. So what do we see in the chart here? As you can clearly see, it had been trading in a little bit of a range up here before it dropped, and this is a one-year chart. So, And then the, it traded in a range here as it uh, basically trended downwards along with the rest of the market, but then it started trending up. Right? And Caterpillar has been quite strong, quite bullish lately. So we do have a bullish, uh, basically, uh, projection, or I have a bullish projection for CAT. But normally, big blue chip stocks like this don't rocket up. They, they don't go parabolic. They go up you know, quite strongly, depending on what's going on in the economy, and then they consolidate for a while. And then they go up again, and then they consolidate again. So what we're looking at here is basically the situation where we want to not be so bullish or bearish, right? So it just made a run up, and we're basically expecting it to consolidate. So what we're going to do is we are still bullish longer term on the stock, but it could be a little bit bearish on the near term. So what are we saying here? We want to get into a bullish, a bullish trade on a ticker such as CAT, uh, but it's going to happen over a long period of time. So this is the June 16, 2023, 270 call. It's currently trading at 250 something, okay, 257 as you can see here. And we expect this to go to 270, but CAT is a slow mover. You know, uh, It's going to go up and down, and it's going to go up and down very slowly. So we would expect this to reach 270, but we want to give ourselves time because that is what basically kills options premiums. And that's why a lot of option traders, which are usually option buyers, end up losing money. Uh, you know, m more than 70% of all options expire worthless. And so if you were on the buying side of that option, then you're basically left, you know, with a worthless contract. So you give yourself time so that you can actually reach your target. Now, the longer you go out, the more expensive option contracts are. So what you do is you sell a call, 
similar call against that long call. But that similar call that you sell is way, way short dated. So this is basically a six month difference between the one we're selling and the one we're buying. So we're selling and I actually ended up doing two by mistake because I wanted the actual 267.5 call as a short call, but I mistakenly uh, you know, selected the 260 call and I ended up with it. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like. Normally, um, we saw on that chart, the calendar is a very symmetrical uh, profit and loss chart. You have one, um, one area, okay, or one strike, which is where you, you will profit the most. In this case, it's the 260, because remember, we're talking about this top one here. Okay, it's always going to be your short strike. Okay, that's where you want it to end up because that's when you where you'll have the most profit. And uh, if we skew it a little bit, right? So this is the second one. Uh, it's farther away from the 257. It's the 267. So 10 points out of the money to the right. Then that peak or the maximum profit shifts over to the right. So we are expecting it to you know, basically go up to 267 and a half, but not so fast. Okay. So we do believe it's going to be below 267.5 on the short term. So we do a, uh, a short, you know, the January is going to be a short 267.5, but it's still bullish because, you know, in the longer term, we're expecting this th thing to go higher. All right. So what happens? Here we go. This is basically, uh, and excuse my chart here, it has two peaks because I did a, un, intentionally a double diagonal. So I ended up buying two diagonals and I wasn't supposed to, but it was a mistake. So this is what a chart of a dub, double diagonal looks like, which is actually a thing. So you guys can look into that as well if you want. But this is basically what we end up with. This was about two or three days after I put the trade on. And as you can clearly see, Caterpillar has been going uh, up uh, 257 to, from 257.73 from 257.20. So it has been going up, up and down actually, but mostly up. And therefore, um, the ones that are still uh, profitable are the short calls because it hasn't, you know, it hasn't gotten close to 260 or hasn't reached 260 uh, on either of them. And it hasn't reached 267.5. So that is why uh, these are green. And that is what you want. You want these to be uh, green in the short term because you don't expect these uh, calls to reach the strike. Okay, so what you're doing is that remember you paid. Ooh, um, I can't believe it was a, around two hundred or three hundred dollars for these long calls, and basically, um, what you're going to be doing is chipping away at that three hundred dollar contract that you paid for by collecting these $100 basically every week. So how many weeks do we have before that? Well, if we're talking about six months and you have four weeks, that's about 20 or so weeks before then. So you can collect premium 20 or so times before that, which will bring the, uh, the cost of that contract way down. So here, this is already set to go. We can go ahead and buy these back because we are 107.50 in the money here about profitable here, and we are $52 profitable here. Okay, and um, there's a lot of things that you can build these diagonals around uh, when you expect volatility to come down uh, because you sold these. So when you sold them, you better have had high premium, which means high volatility. So when you buy them back, you want these to be, um, you know, obviously cheaper. So what that means is that you want volatility to come down. So you usually put these on before IV crush. And what's going to happen here is that now you have the uh, th these two calls, which are ready to be sold or bought back rather. And uh, that is what we did. So let's go ahead and look at what was going on. Caterpillar basically reached uh, this high and it topped out around here. And this is, um, this is actually the, uh, uh, the 15 minute chart of this peak right there. As you can see, it made that high of 260.5. And then ever since then it came back down 
And as it tried to run back up, you can clearly see that it wicked out. And there was, uh, this was, I was expecting this to come back down, which it did. And that is when those sold calls were going to be profitable. And a lot of the other uh, market and tickers, and specific tickers such as PFE, back, and SPY, which uh, are uh, also blue chips and uh, usually not high growth um, tech, big tech names, were also on the way down. So this is when I went ahead and took advantage of buying back those calls. And as we can see here, this is what it ended up doing during these past three days after I bought uh, or got into these diagonals. And now what I have left are just the two longs, okay? And these are still for June 16th, and those are ready to keep. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and wait for the market to go back up. It did a little bit here on Friday, and I expect it on Monday to go up a little bit more. And I'll go ahead and sell uh, a couple more calls for these to convert them back into diagonals, okay? And I'll go ahead and post these back up when I come. So what you do is you basically expect uh, the sold calls to go green. Once they do, even for a little bit, you go ahead and you buy them back. And then you don't have to wait for expiry, obviously, uh, but you could if you wanted to. And then you go ahead and you wait for the market to go back up a little bit. And then you go ahead and get back into short calls because that's, if the market goes up, that's when those short calls are going to be high in premium. So it did go up a little bit on Friday. I could have gotten in there, but I actually I was busy with something at work, but I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and wait for Monday to possibly go back up, and it might actually go back up and test this 260.5 um, uh, resistance, which is would be the perfect point, uh, moment in time to get back into maybe uh, one of these. So I'll go ahead and probably sell another call on Monday, and sell another call when it reaches 260.5 just to see if I can get the best uh, or the most amount of premium for those sold calls and just keep on going. Okay, so after I bought back the short calls, this is what I had, just my two long June calls. But some opportunities showed up and I took advantage, so I want to run those by you guys. So I decided to sell another call and it was the January 27th, so it was that same week, for 66 or so dollars. And here it is, the 262.5. So I went a little bit higher than the 260 original. And that one cost me 66, or it gave me 66 dollars. And then, for the other diagonal, I went ahead and sold a 260 on the February 3rd week, which is the next week. Uh, so this was the 270 call, and it was, as you can see here, the in the money probability is about 26%. So I have my second diagonal set up with two new short calls, the January 27 and the February 3rd. So I gave myself more time on that second one. And what do you know? At the end of the day, I was already 30 or so dollars in profit. And it was January 27, one day to expiry, so I went ahead and de-risked. So this is what Caterpillar had done that day. And I went ahead and bought back just the January one. And this is what I got more or less for it, about $48. Okay, so I'm buying back that January 27 because I made a quick 30 bucks on that day. And I went ahead and sold another one. And I went farther out. I already had a 270 for February. And I went ahead and got a 275 for February. So that was $1.30, $130. So this is my setup for next week. Both of the short calls are now February 3rd. So on the top, we can see that first diagonal. And you can see that we sold and bought uh, once for a 197 profit. And then we sold and bought again for a quick $26 profit. So uh, we've made about um, $2.20 uh, up on that top diagonal. And we have sold the new February 3rd call for 137 which we're still sitting on. And for the bottom diagonal, um, which was the mistake one, actually, we've made $86 profit. And we're sitting on a sold call for 270 So let's see what happened at the end of the week. So these were our two uh, diagonals. You can see on the uh, far right hand side, 
and um, I actually decided to get out of one of them because it was a mistaken diagonal to begin with. So I got out of one of them, and this is um, what I ended up with. They were both net green, or net positive, as you can see here, the one that I'm left with is also net positive. It's a net positive for $80. Um, but I don't want to get rid of this one because I want to keep cycling through those weeklies um, and moving my strikes up higher. So this is what I ended up with, with just the one diagonal right now. And on um, Monday and Tuesday, uh, which is earnings that have been coming out pretty much in line with uh, some uh, misses as was expected, this is what has been happening with Caterpillar, and I actually decided that because the end of this week, uh, when the Fed announces, might be quite bullish, that I would exit my February 3rd call uh, earlier, uh, three days early, and this is what I'm, what I've ended up with. So you can see here that um, the bottom diagonal I actually closed out, and um, I ended up making a one dollar twenty six or sorry one hundred twenty six dollar profit on that one and I am still sitting on the top diagonal where I have the uh, only the long leg so I only have the first um, June 13 270 call uh, at around 15 uh, five or with this is what it cost me so a uh, caterpillar is expected to go up with the rest of the market in this upcoming bullish week, so I decided to simply sit on the long call. See you next time.